Yo, what's going on, everybody? Jason Trio here with Bitrio.com. Today is Monday, January 24th, 2022. We got the DraftKings results here. Divisional round playoffs. I put a couple lineups in this week. Four to be exact. And uh, cashed on one. The other three, no. I had like 160, 170, 140, 130, 115. So the one that I did on stream last Friday was this Joe Burrow lineup. So we're going to go over that. Uh, It had one good pick. And the rest looked like they were pretty weak. I watched one game this weekend. The Bengals Titans game. I watched the one game that was on Saturday. I was out at my father in law's house, so I watched it. And uh, neither team really looked good. The Bengals wound up winning 19 to 16, but neither team looked good. The Titans front four, maybe front five six seven you know whatever they had a couple blitzes in there but that pass the pass rush was looking really good but joe burrow passing eh didn't really look great Tannehill passing eh didn't look really look great either he did have that one pass that went in there i think it was uh i don't know who the hell that dude was See if I can find his ass. A Brown. AJ Brown out. Like one handed grab went in there to AJ Brown. That shit was nasty. That was really good. Uh, but other than that, the quarterbacks didn't look good. The running backs didn't look great either. Um, Mixon did good. I had Mixon in one of my lineups, but it was like a punt play, you know? Uh, he had 50 receiving yards, 54 rushing yards, six catches. He had that touchdown. But it was, I guess it was, yeah, it was a highly contested game, but the picks, you know, there was a couple of picks throughout the game. There was a really nasty pick by one of the Titans players, man. He freaking uh, scooped it up off the ground and picked it off really good. That put the momentum in Tennessee's favor, but they just couldn't, they just couldn't, uh, they just couldn't pull it out. So the Bengals win. And that's the only game that I watch. So we're going to go over our lineup here. So our lineup was Joe Burrow. It was 6,600, 19% owned. He had 348 passing yards. So he still had a lot of passing yards. He got the plus 300 passing yard bonus, threw a pick, ended up with 16 points. Now we stacked him with Jamar Chase, who was 7,100 and 33% owned. He had 109 receiving yards. He got the 100-yard bonus for 19 points. Well, you know, 19 points, not great for 7,100. And we also stacked Burrow with Tyler Boyd for 4,800 salary. He had two catches for 17 yards and three points. So big snowflake there for Tyler Boyd. Oh, no. And we ran it back on the Titans side with Julio Jones. Hey, Julio Jones was getting some looks. He was only 4,700, 10% owned. Six catches, 62 yards on the day for 12 points. That wasn't terrible. He could have easily got more. Just that's the way the game goes. You know, one catch here, one catch there in the red zone, breaks a tackle. You never know with these games. He, he had the potential. I mean, he was getting a lot of looks. Six catches. I don't know how many targets he got, but... I was surprised that Julio Jones was getting all that love. Like, damn, Julio could actually do something here. But again, Tannehill, you know, not really great. And uh, Derrick Henry looked good on the ground, but there was just no room. He looked fast getting the ball. But the Bengals, dude, they got some big-ass D linemen, dude. At least three of them. The one dude, like, they got, like, a defensive end. He did have a sack. Or he had something to tackle in the backfield. He had a good play, but he was he wasn't as big as the behemoths that the Bengals got. The Bengals got at least like two fucking behemoths. I think they got at least one behemoth. I think it was like number ninety nine or something. Dude was big as shit. So our tight end, we went 
And I'm pretty sure this is the one I did on stream. I did four lineups, so I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty damn sure this was the one. Our tight end, we went Gronk, 5,800, 20% owned, four catches for 85 yards, 12 points finished up, and the Bucks lost, it looks like. So the Rams beat the Bucks. And then we had another tight end, Dawson Knox, 4,900 salary, 22% owned. Two catches for nine yards and two points. So Dawson Knox, even though the Bills scored 36 points, Dawson Knox didn't do anything. And we had the Packers defense, 3,200 salary, 15% owned. Finished up with four sacks and a pick for 10 points. We stacked that with our best play of the day. Running back Aaron Jones, 6,800 salary, 12% owned. He had 129 rushing yards, nine catches, for 29 points so that was pretty good we also ran the 49ers running back here eli mitchell 5800 salary 28 percent owned he had 18 receiving yards 15 or 53 rushing yards on three catches and a snowflake 10 points so we finished with 115 points pretty weak here pretty weak uh, it looked all right. Our best lineup was, believe it or not, a Ryan Tannehill stack. We ran a Ryan Tannehill stack with AJ Brown and Julio Jones. Ran it back with Uzama and Joe Mixon. <laughs> pretty, pretty wild, right? We also stuck Aaron Jones in there. Tyreek Hill, Packers defense, and our letdown which could have could have possibly won us a million bucks was none other than stefan diggs stefan diggs three catches for seven yards oh my he had five points here stefan diggs 28 percent owned and he let everyone down including himself and including his team ouch stefan diggs you let everyone down i don't know what happened where the Chiefs doubling him, something, but dig, you know, when it's time to play, the, the playmakers step up. And Stefan Diggs did not step up, much like us in our lineup. Our lineup sucks, just like Diggs. Ooh. All right, so let's take a look at the actual Millionaire Maker winner here. And it was put in by. Where's my shit at? There it is. John Dobrik, John Dobrik, num numero nine. John Dobrik at uh, 273 points. Let's take a look at this lineup. First, let's see how many entries Mr. John Dobrik, John Dobrik, John Dobrik. See what he had, John Dobrik out here putting in 30 entries. Do the quick math on that calculator please 30 times 20 equals 600 dollars and you turn the 600 dollars into a cool one million dollars yo john dubrick he didn't brick on this one this one was a swish all right so mr dubrick here went with a josh allen Quarterback, 7,600 salary, 27% owned, had four passing touchdowns, 329 passing yards, and 68 rushing yards. Also had a two-point pass. Ah, uh, that's the one that went to uh, Stefan Diggs. So he Diggs got the two-point conversion. Josh Allen finished up with 40 flaming hot points. And Josh Allen was stacked with just one receiver. No, it wasn't Stefan Diggs. That would not have got you the million dollars. It was, in fact, stacked with this dude, Gabriel Davis. Don't know who the fuck this dude is, but apparently he's on the team. Gabriel Davis, 4,600 salary, 7% owned. He had four, count them, four, receiving touchdowns. 201 receiving yards on eight lone catches. What the hell? He had eight catches 
for 200 yards. I mean, we got to pull the calculator back out for that again. What the fuck? Holy shit, Mr. Davis. 200 yards divided by just eight catches. That's 25 yards a catch. All right. I mean, it doesn't sound that impressive, but still 200 yards. Damn good. Four touchdowns. Yo, 55 points. Holy hell. The running back for the winning team featured Jarek McKinnon. This dude souped up. I mean, two games in a row. He's just rocking it, doing really good, getting a ton of passing targets. 4,800 salary, 17% owned. He only had 25 rushing yards, but he had five catches and 54 receiving yards. Finished up with 12 points. Just a filler, you know, 4,800 points. Bam, slap him in there. And the other running back was Leonard Fournette. So Fournette must have came out from IR. I was looking at him. He had a big I the hell R next to his name when I was drafting. Unless he didn't, but I'm pretty sure he did. I wasn't fucking with Leonard Fournette, but lo and behold, he comes back at a 5,700 salary. Damn, Leonard. I might have fucked with your ass. A home team. And it's contrarian, right? Everybody going to be on Tom Brady and all those receivers. Go with Leonard Fournette. That's contrarian. Also, I was thinking the same thing with Joe Mixon. That's contrarian. Everybody going to be on the Bengals, Joe Burrow, including myself and the receivers. But slap in a little Joe Mixon on the contraire. Is that the word? A contraire. I don't know about that. But it definitely would have been contrarian. And Leonard Fournette paid off. 5,700 salary, 17% owned, two rushing touchdowns on 51 rushing yards. Nine catches for 56 receiving yards. 31 points. And the other wide receiver was Cooper Cup. So cheap. 8,600. I think he was the most expensive receiver on the slate this weekend. But it's Cup. And he's cheap if he's under 9K. So next week, he's probably going to be, what, 89? 9? Just make him 9. 91! Just make him 9. 9K! This weekend, he was only 8,600. I played him in one of my lineups, too. 23% owned. He had one touchdown, 183 receiving yards on 9 catches and a fumble for 35 points. A.J. Brown was the other receiver from the Titans. 6,200 salary, 23% owned. Five catches, 142 yards, and a touchdown for 28 points. And Uzama, the tight end for the Bengals, a super sleeper, right? This guy should have been in everyone's lineup. 3,400, he gets a ton of targets, 16% owned, seven catches, 71 yards, 14 points. And Tyreek Hill in the flex spot here, 6,600. Tyreek Hill seemed a little cheap too. They all seemed cheap, you know? It was like, I, Ty, I went one lineup, it was like Tyreek Hill, Stefan Diggs, Cooper Cup, like all these people, they seem, they were, I guess because it was playoffs, they were down in price, but still couldn't win. Bitch! So Tyreek Hill here had 11 catches for 150 yards and a touchdown, 34 points. And the surprise for me was the 49ers defense, 2,500, 12% owned. They had five sacks and a touchdown, defensive touchdown for 21 points. And the 49ers! Beat the Packers 13 to 10. I had Aaron Rodgers in one of my lineups too. But no, I had Aaron Rodgers, the running back dude, Aaron Davis, whatever his name is, Aaron Jones, and fucking Devontae Adams as well. I had that stack rolling, but no, no, no. The 49ers win to make it to the. NFC championship game. So let's take a look here. NFL playoff. We're just going to type it in. NFL playoffs schedule. Whatever. Can't spell any of those words. All right. So here's what we got going on here. This right here. Got a little bit of this for next weekend. Only two games. Only two games now. We got the Bengals traveling to Kansas City to take on the Chiefs. And the 49ers traveling to wherever, LA, oh shit, to take on the Rams. So if I had to, I mean, who knows? Dude, we could have a Bengals 
49ers Super Bowl. If I had to guess, that's what I would say right now. Bengals 49ers? Because the Rams, right? It's LA. The four, all the 49ers from San Fran are going to be in LA. Nobody likes the Rams. Because they're not the home team. <laughs> the Rams. We don't know where they're from. They're from somewhere else. Not LA. All these teams changing. So, could be the Chiefs. I mean, look, Andy Reid. You know, Andy Reid's not playing around here. He's trying to get another ring with the Chiefs. He doesn't have any rings with the Eagles now. But that's all right. We still like Andy Reid over here. Big Red. Big Red. Big Red. We still like Big Red now. So, that's what it's looking at. That's what it's looking like here. The Bengals at the Chiefs. The Niners at the Rams. And I'll put a lineup in. We'll, we'll do it on Friday. We'll do our lineup on Friday and see who we're going to go with. But right now, I don't know. I mean, are the 49ers defense that are they that good? Now, they were able to stop Aaron Rodgers to just 10 points. Are they going to be able to do the same at home? Quote, unquote, home. It's in California, right? So that's 49ers home. Against Matthew Stafford and Cooper Cup. I don't know Stafford's on fire, right? But we'll see how that goes down. That's that's kind of an interesting game. That actually could be a low scoring game. 49ers doing it. But two games, four teams on the slate. Really, really hard to win. Maybe we will win, but if not, it is another season where we lost all our money. This year, we probably lost like 600 bucks. I don't even know. Something like that. But it is fun. You know, you take $20, $100, whatever you do every week, and you slap it out there for your chance at a million dollars. That's a gamble that I'm willing to take all damn day. Somebody's going to win it. Somebody's going to win it out of about 300,000 entries. Somebody's going to win that shit. So, you know, it just gives you something to, to live for. It gives you something to look forward to, you know, when you're like, yo, even if you don't watch the games like me, you know, I don't even watch these shits. But it gives you something to look forward to. Like, yo, I could be, I could take a million dollars, you know? Fuck, I could wake up on Monday and have a milli. Yo, that's pretty good. It's very similar to Bitcoin in that way, you know, where Bitcoin's like, yo, you have something to look forward to. Like, yo, there's only 21 million of these Bitcoin things. It solves the Byzantine General's problem? Hold on, what's that? Oh, shit. That's really important? That's really big? Oh, shit. Maybe, maybe should get a little bit of this you don't have to buy a whole bitcoin you just get a little piece of that shit you know carve out your little nichey niche Carve about your little piece and stack it baby hold that shit buying whole bitcoin all right that's gonna be it for this one thank y'all for watching later